I, I would describe it in like three words, um, economic impact and community. And I say those three words because that's the words that I heard people who work at LinkedIn use pretty often in some meetings and stuff like that. So I was invited to be in the, well, really I applied to be in the Creator Accelerator program, LinkedIn in 2022 uh, or 2021, they announced that they're going to invest like a million into the creator community, the creator economy. They're like, yo. Yeah. We are back. That shit happens. Oh my god! So today is February, first of February, Black History Month. I'm black as fuck, proudly. So it's only right that I had to launch shit happens on the first of February, and I got to do it with the beautiful Queen Victoria in the morning, and I get to do it with an incredible King this afternoon. What better way to start? What better way to start? Black History Month. Now, by the way, uh, talk about commitment and consistency. I'm on the car right now, stuck in traffic. I'm not in my studio, but we're still going to do this because you know what? Shit happens. I'm going to go ahead and bring on the incredible one and only Walter. Welcome to Shit Happens. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah, I'm excited to be here. You know, this is my first time doing a live to Instagram from like one of these broadcast apps. So yeah, appreciate the welcoming to this. Then you know what? Well, now it's my second because I did in the morning, but today's also my first time. I've never li- live broadcasted. Okay. Like I'm just, we are starting ugly, right? Doing historical <laughs> things on Black History Month, day one, let's do it. Exactly, exactly. So how are you feeling, What I know I was just with you last week. How are you feeling? Are you oh, man. Uh, Yeah, fully recovered back in it. I uh, didn't really have a choice to, you know, get recovered or not. I just got to get into it. But yeah, you know, it was cool. Cool seeing you in action once again. If y'all didn't know, Paula is, you know, the queen of these podcast events. When you see her at one of them, she's all over the place. Everybody knows her. Everyone's like, Paula, what's good? What's happening? So good to see you. She's just walking around, Randy. What's up, hon? How you doing? Love. Oh, my God. So great to see you. She knows everybody. She knows everybody. She's not your ambassador yet. Paid ambassador yet. Y'all better, <laughs> you know, hit her cash app. Hit the Venmo. Hit the hit the invoice. Get her, get her some money. But, yeah. All right. Make it happen, make it happen. But it was so good. It was so good to see. And it's funny because we both live in Atlanta, but we first met like at a pod tour, then Afros and Algiers all the way in Baltimore, and then Pod Fest all the way in Orlando. (laughs) Everywhere but Atlanta. Everywhere but Atlanta. But Mm -hmm. hopefully this year, this month, because you know, on the 29th of February, I'm hosting. I'm there. Uh, an, an Atlanta meetup. So I actually have a meeting this week to finalize shit so we can have that time and start letting people know that, their location and everything. But um, that's going to be exciting. Oh, my God. It's going to be on the 29th. I think it's the last day of February. That's right. And then Black History Month with you. Just then ending on the Thursday. I was like, what better way to close the damn month? <laughs> so I need the all my black day. Atlanta faces to show up and turn up. <laughs> <laughs> got to got to do it now speaking of community right because most of the time i've met you it's been in the community surrounding and you are an advocate mm-hmm. for community especially a community advocate especially for us our people the black people we need all the advocating in this community so what got mm-hmm. you into the and i figured that would be a nice 
conversation to have since it's Black History Month. We are black as fuck. And I wanted to know what made you, because not everybody who is black roots for the black community or advocates for them. You know, some people just advocate for themselves. So what got you into the space like, I need to advocate for my own people, for me and my own people, because you could advocate for yourself only. That's a good question. Yeah, because um, I advocate for others more than myself, that's for sure. <laughs> I'm working on that, working on that. But uh, for, first thing that popped in my mind is my mom. Got to give her credit, of course, the creator. Um, but I grew up in a community that she created. She's a big advocate for when it comes to parenting and stuff, that it takes a village to raise a child. But she just brings that to everything. She had a school, a Montessori school that she started um, in Charleston, South Carolina, had, you know, children and families from all backgrounds. She made sure that there were financial options available so people who couldn't necessarily afford or traditionally afford a private school could still get in there at no extra cost. So, um, yeah, I just kind of grew up in her intentional community that she built. So I think it just that type of mindset's ingrained. I played team sports, and in those sports, you, you know, you'd have the, you could be the best player, but you're only as strong as you're, you know, uh, quote unquote weakest player. That's so it. just always in that mindset mm-hmm. of community and building with people. Um, when it comes to advocating for black spaces, um, I would say that I think at first I didn't know it was a just a me thing. Uh, or I didn't know it was like really like some of the things I tackle, I, I thought I was the only one who experienced it. I'll say that. And then when I got to asking people about it, I started to realize that others experience these things as well. So the very first thing that I tackled was natural hair and professional environments. Uh, was before the Crown Act came along, just creating a lot of content around that. And now it's a, you know, huge campaigns going on. So still advocating, but now because there's so many other people in that space pushing for it, policymakers, uh, influencers, all these different people with large platforms, I get to focus in on areas that um, – don't get as much attention or just want to tackle things from a specific standpoint. So that's, you know, podcasters, that's people who, um, you know, income equality across the whole community. Um, those, those are kind of the couple of things I'm pushing for right now. I love that. And, and, and that's the thing, right? Like even me before podcasting, I really like, yes, the, I, there's communities, there's being part of community, but I don't know if I really felt as much as when I started joining the podcasting communities and, um, and because it drove me to other communities, not just podcasting, like you find your people who invite you to other communities that belong to you. But it also, where you said where most of the time we think we are the only ones dealing with this shit. Also, sometimes we feel like, uh, I don't want to talk about it because maybe I'll be judged of how I'm feeling or I'm going through this, but then, once you start talking about it, you're like, oh, my God, I really am not the only one in this. those spaces where they can give me the support. People don't understand how much support comes in being part of a community or giving back to a community. Yeah, that's fact. By the way, I just got to say, you look real fancy right now. You look like you're getting, like, driven around uh, Paris or New York. You got the fur on and all that stuff in the backseat. Like, yes, darling, yes, community talk. <laughs> yeah. What's that the world issue? Hey. <laughs> Okay. Uh, mm-hmm. What 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 I'm telling you, he was getting his shit right too while we were on our backstage. Uh, I had to put it on as well. You know, you can't be drinking good water. <laughs> Plus, <laughs> it, it's Black History Month. We are Black, black History. History. We gotta look. We gotta look. You know, our yeah, best. So fresh as a maze. Oh my God, fresh as a maze. Okay. <laughs> so, um, speaking of communities, right? Uh, Okay, y'all, can y'all hold on one minute? I've reached, but I'm just going to get out. Absolutely. Like, Atlanta weather is hopping right now. So I'm going to sit right here and finish this conversation before I go back inside to do what I was going to do. So Okay, before you have your dinner with the Obamas. You know, you know, yeah. you, you gotta, you gotta, oh my God, even the lighting works for me. Look at this. There we go. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so um, one thing I want to say, you know, sometimes people feel like um, belonging in a community or showing up for your community. I think in our mindset, 
we are always about what do I get? What if I come? What am I getting? What's mm. gonna get me? Like you know. And I have been showing up for podcasts. And even when we met, you remember when I was talking about you, you're like, man, the way you're talking about it, I really need to to make sure I come. And yeah. Then, but it's not until you're there and you feel that vibe. Like literally, the even if I didn't have to be there, the entire vibe of that community just makes you realize like oh my god and then i do all these things out of love not that like oh my god i'm expecting a gift or anything and i got awarded yes i got awarded a community hero award not that i knew not that i was asking for it but it shows that people are watching people are seeing you and sometimes that's the biggest reward ever to be seen because there's nothing like doing shit and nobody's seen (laughs) (laughs) all right (laughs) So with you and community, and I know you started also because of uh, work, your, your podcast. Let's talk about your podcast. You had a podcast where you were uh, work, black workspaces and black hair. Why was that important for you? Because um, I graduated the same year that these U.S. courts ruled that companies can legally dismiss um, a job applicant just based on something like hair. They said it's not tied to race. So basically that told me that me with Lux, I don't know if y'all can see him, but you know, oh, yeah. Lux, um, if I was applying to a job, I could be the perfect candidate and they could be like, yeah, you get this job if you cut them. They could legally do that. So, um, you know, I was getting a, a lot of uh, advice to cut my locks as I was graduating. Uh, before that, you know, I always got praised for them by everybody. So when I was trying to figure out, okay, you know, I want to get, you know, fresh out of college trying to you know pay back these student loans trying to live afford life um i just knew that i just didn't want to cut the lux even though that meant that i wouldn't get a job so i just started asking people like how can i do both how can i be me because i knew like if i if someone had a problem with my locks then they probably had a problem with me just as a black person as well so i'm like yeah, i'm not about to fall into that trap and then still be in an environment where I'm not accepted. So I just wanted to ask people questions and it was literally me just trying to figure life out. Um, so I was just encouraged to do something with it. And so that's what created the podcast, a space that proved that natural hair and professionalism could coexist. And that led me to unexpectedly led me to, you know, not the breakfast club, didn't get an invite there, but uh, I did get to speak with people all around the world. This lady who's uh, like the face of a peaceful nuclear movement in South Africa, a black woman with locks, uh, just people and all who have just experienced all these things. And I wanted to show people that we out here thriving, uh, regardless of what they say. So, um, because, yeah, you know, the whole proving that these things exist, you know, you would think, yeah, proving to white people, proving to hiring managers. And, yeah, that's a piece of it. But really, I wanted to prove to us because, you know, I'm not really in the business to change other people's mind, just really kind of show different perspectives. And if we could see us thriving these spaces against the odds, it's going to do a lot for how we just uh, view ourselves and treat others as well. I love that. I'm not trying to change your mind, but I'm going to educate you. <laughs> yeah, you know, you decide if you want to change your mind. That's not my problem. <laughs> exactly. And it's funny because you remember there was that time where people, even if you had a tattoo, you were not going to get hired. You had to hide your tattoo, like put a makeup on. or And then now you find people with tattoos all over. <laughs> <I've always been laughs> yeah, shout out to everyone with a tattoo. I know, right? But it's somehow... That got accepted, but the locks, because even a few, was it a year ago or just last year, kids were being refused to walk the stage because they had locks to graduate. Some kid was not allowed to do his swimming team. Oh, yeah. of- a-, a month ago, a student was suspended because of a new rule that was put in place in their high school that said, you know, you can't have your locks lower than your ears or whatever for men. So, yeah, it's still still happening. It's crazy. It's like they already had that whole huge campaign for another student who was uh, suspended in Texas years ago. And then, boom, they just did it again, and they defended the decision. This guy put out, like, a whole ad in the newspaper defending the decision to suspend this student. It's wild out there. It's wild out there. It really is, because what does luck have to do with my brain or the way I dress or the way I, I do my job or anything, right? 
if mm. we can hire people who have tattoos covered up all over, like there's some people, no offense, I'm a tattoo person. I have almost seven in, but there's some okay. people they have tattoos all over, like and and, and, and they're the, the first entrance. If, if they can get that and my locks, and most people with locks, that's the beautiful thing. They keep them clean, like they're neat and clean and tight. So what does it matter? Like mm. I'm I met these guys at Port Fest. And their podcast is more than a title. And we had a conversation we're like, yeah, we are more than a title. We are more than our skin. We are more than our hair. Mm -hmm. We are more than all that. And I feel like maybe that's why um, I love being a part of communities where you find people who literally don't care how you dress or how you look. They really care about who are you. Yeah. And that's why also showing authentically is important because then if you're not being authentically you, then who are you? That's a bar. That's a gem. That's a takeaway. Shout out to all the communities and people showing up as them as needed. And also in doing that, like Paula, you out here being you, you kind of encouraging other people to be out there being them as well, especially for people, maybe it's their first time. Um, seeing people who are just authentically and unapolog apologetically them, it helps someone feel a little more comfortable, kind of, you know, let that shyness wear off. Like, okay, you know what? I see people doing here. It could be safe here. Or the opposite, we're like, ah, it's not safe here, but at least they know. So it kind of helps people to live their truth. Shout out to Cat Williams. It's the year of living in truth. That's not true, because even when I was doing my, my, my presentation, because mm -hmm. I, I do I always apologize in advance, because I do cast and sometimes it's not that I cast because I love cussing when I get passionate about what I'm talking about you know the fuck just comes like I don't mean it to come but yeah. it's just like about to ask passionate. what's your go-to cuss word what's is it fuck it's always fuck like fuck mm. and then it's also shit because again that's why shit is always like shit or fuck because I started saying shit, trying to not say fuck because people w were more over the fuck, but then apparently shit is also as worse. Yeah, sometimes. shit's lower, lower on the oh damn pole. You know, fuck is top notch. I mean, there's others that are higher up, but fuck is like the last one. Like ah oh, damn, oh oh man, she said, she said but, what? Yeah, that's what that. Means. Change and I did my presentation because I was in my moment. Uh, the the presentation was also about um my mental health and community and, and support system. So I was really talking from the heart and everything. And then when I left the stage, this almost 80 year old lady, I think she was in her 80s or 70s, she was walking with a stick, Miss Elaine, she's incredible. Just saying hi, so cool to catch you guys live. Hi, Pika. Oh, finally. Uh, somebody is there leaving comments. This is my first hey, comment. What's up? <laughs> So when I was when I was living, I, I was standing with Mark, right? So I thought maybe that lady was coming to talk to Mark. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, she was like, I'm sorry, can I disturb you? I was like, yeah, sure, I'll let you guys talk. She was like, no, I want to talk to you. I was like, oh, what's it? <laughs> <laughs> this is how humbling I am, right? Because I'm with Mark, and you know, Mark does a, a lot more yeah, better shit than I do. And, all right? So I'm there like, yeah, what's up? She was like, I just want to say, you fucking killed that shit. I was like, wait, what? Did you just fuck me? me? And she used the fucking word. I was like, I was like, I wasn't the cuss. Like, no, anybody who doesn't cuss, I don't trust. I was like, right? Oh man, it, it rhymes, so you know it's true. If you, if you can make something rhyme, then it's law. But that also made me sure that you go to places where. I am told you're too loud, you're too much, you're too mm. hyper, you're too energetic. But then I'm at places where I'm at port first and I'm awarded for that shit. So it shows you how important belonging in the right community is. Like there's a community for everybody. You mm -hmm. just have to allow yourself to be yourself so people can take you as you are. <laughs> and people will tell you, you have met me three times now in different spaces. My, I'm always on that, on the stage. <laughs> like, I, I, I'm not a, a different person who was at Afros compared to who was at uh, Podfest or who was at um, Port Atlanta. Just that mm -hmm. Afros, I was still new. I didn't know many people. Podfest, I've been going three years, so I know you a already lot of know, people. Know how it works. Yeah, so that one was new, but my energy, my level was still well, so You got to turn up harder uh, this year in Baltimore at the next oh, Afro oh, Scenario. 
we bring in now that I know everybody. And because also some of them came to port first, so we were like, oh my God, yeah. So it's mm. like, and that's why I like to go to these communities because you get to know them and then you yeah. build, after seeing them, you build those um, personal relationships. Whether it's just in podcasting, whether it goes deeper to personal, whether, but it, it grows. So the next time you meet again, it's like, hey, fa, what do you do? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's real. So, Walter, um, with your, you also ended up doing some cool shit with LinkedIn because everybody tells me Walter is the master, the king of, of LinkedIn. I don't know if you know Ralph. You do know Ralph, White Label America. That oh, boy, yeah. I don't know. I don't know what you pay that Nigerian man to be raising praises on you, but <laughs> uh, black man. I don't pay him, just black man. Just black. Uh, uh, Ralph works in tips, so I'm not sure about that. <laughs> <laughs> but um, tell us about the incredible stuff you were you were able to achieve at LinkedIn. Because again, I'm trying to to get better at LinkedIn, and I know most of us black people have been sleeping on LinkedIn. But then you you meet people, and they tell you how much success or how much you can grow in the community in LinkedIn because I've seen people get invited. You were invited to LinkedIn. Like it shows that LinkedIn is a community that also sees and pulls you in. So I want to share a little bit about that. Yeah. Um, I think for everyone who's trying to figure out LinkedIn or is like, eh, not for me. Um, LinkedIn is like, I, I would describe it in like three words, um, economic impact and community. And I say those three words because that's the words that I heard people who work at LinkedIn use pretty often in some meetings and stuff like that. So I was invited to be in the, well, really I applied to be in the Creator Accelerator program, LinkedIn in 2022 or 2021, they announced that they're going to invest like a million into the creator community, the creator economy. They're like, yo, we're the home too, right? So they launched their first ever creator accelerator program it was a u.s based program uh where they were going to select a hundred participants to participate so you know they were flooded with and I, i've applied to stuff before I've, I've rarely got stuff i applied to so i applied to it with the help of uh, a friend of mine shout out to Jason mcdaniel um to be in it and i wasn't sure if they were going to accept me right my whole creator uh journey up to that point had just been me trying to figure things out and also growing my own confidence. So this, uh, like when I first created content, I was hiding behind the camera. My guest was the focus. So this would have been the first time that I was front and center. That was terrifying to me, but I applied anyways. So I applied with my podcast as an inspiration to create this new series called the called working while black. And I was accepted. And basically they wanted the world to know that LinkedIn is the place for creators and a place for community and for everyone who's there, basically, you know, they're, they're looking for different things, but it all could be summed up to economic impact where there's learning how to grow um, as an entrepreneur to grow in their career or just learn some skill that can help them uh, continue to make an economic impact in their own lives. So when I'm speaking to people, you know, on LinkedIn, sometimes their content might not fit necessarily what you think would belong there, but I just kind of remind people, just think about that first and then seeing how your content can fit in there and you'll be straight. So yeah, Paula, um, I mean, there's LinkedIn is a place where you can see everything from like black people calling out corporations and leader corporations on LinkedIn. And those same people they're calling out, will see it. They might not engage with it, but they'll see it. That's, that's what's kind of unique about that platform versus others. So, um, yeah, this is, um, it was a cool opportunity. My first big content contract type of thing, brand deal sort of thing. And uh, yeah, it's really just changed my perspective on the creator economy. I love that. I love that. Mm-hmm. And, 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 and something you said over there, you know, which I also for the longest time had an issue with. I think now my ego is a little bit bigger after uh, Portfest. I hope uh, so. And, <laughs> Just don't go full Kanye. That's the only thing I ask of you. Because after that, you know, I'll still pe- let people know I know you and that we, you know, collab together. But I can't be like, ah, I don't know. She don't. I, don't I mean, th- there's don't some version. There's some versions of Kanye, just not full on Kanye. But there's some versions. We all got a little bit. We yes. all should have a little bit. We should, 
there's this that man was a genius for a while. There's something in there, but just sometimes I think it slips on the wrong side or something. But um, when you say that when you apply, you weren't even sure you will get it or you didn't think you were that good enough because you were still figuring it out. I think that's what ends up stopping a lot of us into going for shit because we have that in our head, right? When I applied oh, yeah. the first time to speak at Podfest, I was like, I'm just new. It's just been one year on my podcast. I don't know shit. Why are they going to pick me over all these people who apply? And I was literally applying to learn to get the word no. Because I was like, if I'm going to be in this space, I need to get used to hearing no and still keep pushing. Because there are going to be a lot of no's. And I have to be okay with that. So I applied mm-hmm. with that mindset. And I ended up getting it. And I was like, oh, fuck. So now I really got to present. Like, God damn it. And <laughs> right. Right, like now I gotta do the damn thing. I wasn't prepared for this. On the same stage with people who the big dogs out there, the people you follow ended up being in the same program you want on the same stage as you are. Yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy. Yeah, and it's I like, st- always go to. And I, and I started with um, case study. I went to panel, which pushed me to moderating a panel at Afros and Arjo, something I've never done. And then from there, I went to speaking on the main stage this year at Pofers with a a lot of people in that room afros and audio that was the first time you had done something like that moderating a panel i'd never moderated a panel i've been in a panel but i've never moderated you killed it it's a different type of pressure it is is because you have to really pay attention to everybody and interject on the question to the next next. like if i'm just being asked if i'm if i'm in a panel and somebody's asking me a question i i don't have to listen to other people i just get to me and say my shit and that's fine but when you're you know, uh, one time I was moderating a panel, right? And when I moderate, I try to, you know, the speakers are there. Like, I want them to, you know, speak and everything. But also, I pay attention to the audience because I like to make sure they're involved with it, too, and cater things around. So one time I asked a question, I was going to scan in the audience to see, like, how they're feeling. And I realized the person was, like, finishing up speaking. I was like, I don't know what they just said. What the fuck is happening? Oh, my God. Oh, shit. Damn. I'm just looking like, oh man, what's in my notes? And then I'm getting nervous, so I can't read my notes because my eyes going everywhere. But I just kind of pivoted real quick, like, y'all, clap that up, bro. <laughs> that was my biggest fear of, because I, I, I'm also a daydreamer, right? So I can literally yeah. drift off to my own world while people are talking. So that's why even when I was sitting, I didn't sit facing the audience. I was like, they will distract me, and. Also, I brought a white guy in our whole black people panel, and we were talking legit black people shit. And, and I know how he is. I was like, please don't say some shit. Cause... So it was also that why and then whying of this. And I was like, man. But somehow I was able to engage with the, 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 the audience, and, and I did good. And that gave me that, like, yo, at Postface, I'm going to apply to be a MC. That's why I MC the track, because of that energy. That the growth I left with from Afros and Algiers. That's why it also holds a dear to me because that was the first time I did that shit. It was received well and I'm going to keep going back because I was like, oh, these mm-hmm. are my people. They they didn't let me fail when I was nervous. People were like, nah, you got this. Look at you. Your energy, like the support, the encouragement. The, <laughs> it was just incredible. And um, But but that's the thing. Like We, we sit there in our head like this sport first Amazing guy of a friend of mine, Trent. Shout out to Trent out loud. He mm. came all the way from Canada. Uh, me and Trent met because he came on my podcast as a guest. Nice. The energy vibes. He wanted to start a podcast. He reached out to me. I, I, I. Oh, you the catalyst. I set him up. I introduced him to Mark and 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 Adam Shively. I told him about Podfest. I told him about Buzzsprout. I got you know and. When he said, when he called me, I was like, I'm coming to Portfest. Is it really worth it? I was like, it is. Come. Mm -hmm. And he came and everybody was meeting. He was telling them, Paula is my mentor. Now, you know, I, in my head, I never thought one day I would be somebody's mentor. (laughs) Look at me, like, half of the time I'm just talking shit. I don't even know the shit I'm doing, but I'm just doing. But somebody to think that you are a mentor in something that you don't even think you are good that good at yet like you know you're that great like why would you think i'm your mentor but somebody right. you you are thinking about yourself like that but the people who are watching you 
they're seeing different things. So sometimes that's what gets in our own way because we have this mentality. I can't be that. I can't yeah. be that. But you're still out there. Whether you think you're doing little, you are inspiring somebody. You are motivating somebody. And people are watching. People are seeing. That's facts. That's facts. Actually, um, people are definitely watching. I was just talking to someone earlier today. Um, and I mentioned going live with you and like, oh, Paula, yeah, I saw she was at PodFest. You know, yeah, your name, your name gets around. And shout out to you for being that uh, mentor. Trent Out Loud. I don't think I actually met him, but I follow him now because of the group chat that was started after PodFest, um, the Instagram one. And um, yeah, yeah it's, just, it's just really cool. You never know who you're going to help at what point in time in their journey. It's just such a cool moment, right? So you could always think back like, man. I mean, that's that's actually proof that you know what you're doing, right? Because you're exactly. able to give people enough uh, advice or energy to keep them going forward, not hold them back. So, yeah, shout out to you. Shout out to you. I Thank think you being a mentor good. doesn't have to be like a – you don't have to be a thought leader to be a mentor. You just have to be doing something for real, and you're doing something. Exactly. You just got to keep on believing in yourself and just keep going, keep learning. And that's why, again, mm-hmm. we're going to circle back to community. That's why community is important because I belong to Afros. I belong to Black, Black, Black Podcast Association. I belong to Atlanta Podcast. I belong to Podfest. I'm in the Empowered Morning sh- Chat, which shout out to that. I joined that group last year. Mm. Uh, after Podfest, Mark had asked me, can you come to the clubhouse room? and share about podcasts because last year i was volunteering i was doing this it's like you were doing uh, all these other stuff i want people to hear on your perspective compared to just us who are visiting and speakers i was like cool i went i love the energy i have been going back ever since it's gonna be this is like i'm celebrating my one year it's every monday seven to eight which is a commitment but again it comes down to how much do you really want to grow in your craft because if you do want to grow you're going to put discipline commitment you're gonna you're gonna do those things yeah and, and i met dominic shout out to dominic 22 award-winning monster like yo dominic one, lawson one thing he told me was like call a bet on yourself always bet on yourself because who is gonna bet on you if you're not betting on yourself mm-hmm. and when i interviewed him on my podcast as soon as he left i went and applied for an award it wasn't a big award because i wasn't ready to like I didn't have the money to invest on these awards because they do cost money. They do. They definitely so, do. <laughs> they're, they're not cheap. Right? There's a lot of awards out there. It's, uh... you know, and they start at 200, one fee, like It's like, damn, okay, okay, okay. So this one was free, whatever. I was like, let me apply. It was just people have to send in votes for you. And, and I got nominated. I don't know how it ended up. I never had back, but I got nominated. Something that I didn't even th- think of, something I never thought about applying. But because I had a conversation with Dominic, who I met in the community that I am now, and I was like, you got to bet on yourself. And I went and did. So I think we should stop sleeping on communities. And we should also stop change our mindset, thinking that, oh, I'm not good enough. Any craft that you're doing, even if there's somebody better than you, Everything you have done so far, you have taught yourself. You have grown it. You have worked on it. You are good at it because you're doing it. <laughs> Facts. I gotta ask you. I gotta ask you. Hey, you can't. You can't have a podcast host on without me asking. Scared of this question, but go ahead. Yeah, you know, honing your craft, I think, is super key. I think that's important, especially when you're trying to think about what your trajectory is and where you're going. So I'm curious. For you, what would you say is your craft for real? That is very, that's such a good question. My craft is talking shit. I mean, come on, aren't we here talking shit? There we go. There we go. um, To be honest, my craft is just connection. I like connecting people. Mm. And I think my podcast is also gives me that not only for me to connect people, but to connect myself with people, and then whoever ends up coming, somehow I end up connecting with with, the, with somebody. If you also see me at Port or wherever, if I hear somebody and I know they're talking about, I'm like, you gotta meet this one. You gotta meet this one. You gotta work with this one. For me to see the connection I made that comes into something is impressive. Like I was at Port yeah. when Trent was there, and he was standing next to uh, Adam and Mark. They were meeting for the first time. And they're like, oh, my God, we all met because of Paula. Paula did the connection. And that just made me, That's like, beautiful. like it is. And to see people, whether they work together now or in the future, 
or they end up having a personal relationship or whatever that comes out for it. I'm a person who, unlike the gatekeepers, I'm not a gatekeeper. I like opening doors and bringing in people. Like whether I, uh, and I tell people, if I can't do it, if I don't know, trust me, I will connect you to somebody I know who can. And from there, it's on you. So I think that's that's my craft. That's beautiful. What's your craft? Don't ask me. I don't know. <laughs> we're gonna be, that's how we're going to end it. So what's okay. your Mr. Walt? Yeah, what's you know. So what's your craft? I'm, I'm actually deciding what craft I'm perfecting and when. I would say a couple things. The thing I'm focusing on, to be honest, is just the ability to kind of use stories to spark conversations. Um, but really the result of that is creating resources for black people. Um, and honestly, those resources are E for everyone, but it's just moving intentionally with black people in mind. So I know I'm uh, launching a podcast this month called the working while black show. And that's something where it's like fully resource driven. I have uh, conversations with people about how they uh, pivoted to working in the podcast industry as a professional, I have conversations with people who've, uh, you know, they quit their job to uh, pursue entrepreneurship full time and what it was like building their business while working. Conversations with people who had no college degree but ended up being like in the leadership of a corporation and stuff like that. So just creating these, uh, telling these stories from people who are in the black community to us so that we could just kind of build that intentional community. I think my craft, I would say, is creating support systems or just kind of being there as support. Um, yeah, just 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 really deciding what that thing I want to craft, though, and hone in on. But that's just what I'm doing right now is just building spaces for people to win, people to thrive. You see, know? so uh, our craft kind of goes together. Connection, support system. There we go. Absolutely. It blends in. Absolutely. And she said that yes, for everybody, but your focus, or like mainly also for black people. I remember um, I was on a live on Tuesday. I normally do say, say your shit on Tuesday, 9 a.m. And mm. I was talking about my, my podcast experience, right? And just going through the shit and I was unpacking all the all the match and everything that I brought back. I, I went to one bag, I came back with two bags because of all the shit I came back with from Portland. But then I said something like, I was so happy to see the amount of black people at Portland this year, because I've been going two times. This was the biggest crowd I saw. And it just made my heart, because most of us don't hear about this, or like we hear about them too late. So to see that people were, were, were able to hear about it and be there and, and get the same privilege and knowledge that's been thrown and be in the same room with all these people was something beautiful for me. Like I was supposed to be on my shift doing my work, but I was like, no, nope, I ain't missing these black meetups. I gotta be there, I gotta meet my yeah. people, I gotta support. And I was there and I stayed till the end and I kept on coming back to see when they were still there and pass by and chill, but I also had some shit to do. So one person was like, you should be happy It's that it's a place for everybody. I was like, don't get me wrong. Port Fest is a place for everybody. There's the biggest diversity. I didn't say that I don't like it. I've been going and I'm still going. But to see that is beautiful, to see all these black people. So you can hate me for saying that, but I am going to be happy to see my people all there. Like the Absolutely. People. Yeah, they they feel the same way if it was reversed, to be honest. So, yeah, I think people don't, I, I think sometimes, like, there's this idea that, you know, just being loud and vocal about wanting a Black presence in places, they th it's just almost like this, like, uh, the scarcity mindset that kind of triggers within, like, what, you don't want us, you don't want it to be blah, 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 but it's less about that and just more so about making sure that our people are getting, you know, same, the same. type of information, uh, same access is like you know it's it's kind of funny it's like when we kind of talk about these things we're really not asking for much at all we're just like oh don't we forget just about us and that's, that's a little little thing to ask and people go crazy or think we can go some revolutionary no it's just, it's just like, get a jet and come pick all of us and drop us yeah down. if you want to we are there please, please do please <laughs> but, do yeah yeah so um 
Yeah, and I don't think it's that. I think it's important for, you know, everyone to be represented because, um, you know, the, the movie Judas and the Black Messiah, you know, following Fred Hampton's story, um, I didn't know this about him, but he had, like, members of the Ku Klux Klan marching with him for equality stuff. And I was like, yo, a black man got the Klan to join forces and what? I mean, that just shows that it's like we're kind of trying to solve a bigger issue like kind of a deeper issue um, that doesn't have any, you know, race distractions type of thing, like people being mad at you because you look different type of thing. It's like, oh, let's get deeper down to this. Like we're all struggling for real. So when we talk about having these inclusive spaces, it's like it's it's the answer to the struggle that everyone experiences because what's good for one culture is likely going to be good for another if they had are allowed access to that. So exactly, yeah. And that's why whenever for me, because. Well, I have a different love with podcasts, right? Um, I don't go to podcast movement. I've never been, uh, maybe when, when I'm on the level where I want my podcast to be, because I know it's much more. Hey, someone someone send Paula a cash app. Sponsor her ticket, <laughs> plane travel. The ticket isn't even the most expensive part, y'all. The, the hotel. Sponsor that hotel. Like, so, but for me, podcast, right? Um, just how welcoming it is to everybody. But just a lot of people don't know how well, like, they don't hear about it as much. That's why I, I always try to shout to my black people, like, you got, I need you all to come to Portface because the information is there, the knowledge is there, there's space for you all, but I need you to show up. And look at us, how we all showed up and we told Chris, like, you know, we got to make a black track next year. We got to do some black stuff. And because we are showing up, we need to, to show up as well. You can't yeah. expect, you know, because if, if there were only two, three people, how are we going to ask for a black track, but there are only two, three black people? You think it'd be better that? to have a black track or have sessions integrated into the other tracks? I think there should be sessions in, integrated because, and, and first of all, I don't think also podcast is actually going to do, a, a, I mean, they could, they, they, they wouldn't because most blacks speak English. I remember the only time they did a Spanish track because people are coming from Spanish. Uh, I remember Spanish, that. yeah, because it was Spanish-speaking people who had Spanish podcasts, so that's why they called it the Spanish track because yeah. it was all Spanish. They couldn't fix it in between English and Spanish. That would make people move around so much, so yeah. they had to create their own track. But that I don't think it cool. would be um, it would be a black track, but it would be like black information, like mm -hmm. you know, like ah. Uh, a stage of melanin and popping. Uh, not exactly that, but you know, like where. Right. And, and it was so happy. I saw those two boys. I think they were 11 and there were speakers on the stage and they were the youngest speakers we had the purpose and they were black. And to see that, that made my heart happy. So I want to hmm. see, and, and I know this year we had quite a few black speakers, but I want to see more. That's why I'm constantly encouraging people like, apply to speak. You think, yeah. you think you might not have something to share, but if you're, sharing anything on your podcast you have shit to share if they could give a stage to me they can give you a stage <laughs> hey you told me up the line though Thank they you had the mind. honor of giving you a stage that's and what it is see you should be my hype my hype man was well, like you, you know exactly but thank you so much for hanging out with me before we go please let the people know all that incredible stuff you do, where they can find you, any upcoming project you have, what we should be looking for, and leave a little advice for people who are struggling to find communities to belong or fit in. Like, what, what's the best way to go around? Um, good question, good question, good question. I think, like, my biggest thing, uh, the biggest lesson that kind of set it off for me is just knowing that I'm not alone. I think uh, we sometimes we feel like we're going through this and that by ourselves, but it's important to, you know, reach out when you need help and support with something. I think we all have something. Uh, you know, it's funny, actually, when I, when I coach people or do any consulting stuff with people, um, oftentimes, like, I, I'll give them, you know, new insights or new ways to do this or approach it this way. But oftentimes when they're telling me what they're going through, what they're kind of trying to figure out, it's like they already have the answer kind of within them. They just need help pulling it out of them. So it's kind of interesting. Like we all have um, this really, really dope intuition, you know, our gut. That we just have to learn how to trust. That's something I'm learning as well real time. So just really knowing that we're not alone and to learn how to trust yourself 
Uh, you may not have all the answers. You may be wrong, but I think you're going to be uh, better off trusting on yourself, get a lot more wins than wrongs. Um, I was once told that I could come up with a million reasons why something won't work for me, but I never really put as much effort into thinking about why something will work. So that's Very what... Cool. That's what I'm a. That's what I'm a leave with, and um, you know, you superstar find world. Yes, that's the. Hey, oh, I think I know what that is. I think that's well. Mr. Wu what's up, man? Oh, uh, that's a real superstar, man. I'm ready for him to pop back out with this podcast. That's what I think it is. Um, but yeah, yeah, you know, I'm just, I'm just pretend to be a superstar on TV. But um, would you ask where where people follow me and stuff? What what you got going on? What you what people can look forward to, and where they can find you? <laughs> um, yes, this is this is the year I call the year of show and tell. So this is gonna be another thirty minutes where I tell you about everything I got going on and what I'm a part of. Um, so I'm gonna just shout out you, Paula. Luton, you know, there's some people who listen to podcasting times three, times four, so do it in the like highest speed. Right? <laughs> yeah. Times three is crazy. <laughs> um. I'm I'm just gonna shout out, you know, all the spaces I'm in because that's what's important. I mean, this whole conversation is about community. So one, shout out to you, Paula. Appreciate you creating this platform. Um, shout out to Afros and Audio, a really, really amazing festival uh created for independent creatives. I got to speak last year. It's a really amazing and space. you killed it. You you're talking about storytelling. That was amazing storytelling <laughs> that day. Yes, yes. Shout out to my co speaker, Chris Ward Jr. Um shout out to Afros and uh, uh well shout out to them. Shout out to them again. But shout out to Black Podcaster Association. Shout out to Black Podcast Awards. Um shout out to something I just joined called the Mosaic Collective that's all about making uh sure that black people are not their content is not looked at as unsafe. There's this huge thing with creators not getting the same access to sponsorships and brand deals because, you know, AI and just a cultural misunderstanding leads a lot of people with the money to feel that oh if we sponsor this or do this um, it's not going to look good for our brand, and that's just because they don't understand a lot of the cultural uh, languages that's going on. So the Mosaic Collective just joined that, so I'll shout them out to um, shout out to uh, the Black Podcast Club. I know what's coming back. That's what helped me get into podcasting. Women uh, of color. Shout out women of color. Never been a part of that community, but love what they're doing. <laughs> I know they just got bought out, or not bought out, but they just got. Um, just merge or whatever. Yes, they, big uh, congratulations. Yeah, that's huge. I need to brush up on that. Um, shout out to Elsie. She's over at Libsyn, a really amazing figure in oh, the yeah. Love in that stuff. So I just told you I won't spend time telling y'all everything that I got going on. Okay, but, but a little bit on, uh, on your upcoming podcast. Let people know about that. Yes, the Working Wall Black Show. Technically, it's out already. It's just not the official launch. The trailer's out there, but the Working Wall Black Show is basically a mixtape for your career growth, uh, for people looking to explore entrepreneurship, trying to figure out, like, yo, how do I take control of my own career? What direction do I go in? Um, yeah, we have a lot of great conversation. I'm, uh, a lot of really dope episodes. Uh, to launch some of the names we mentioned actually during this conversation are on the podcast. So, um, yeah, excited for y'all to see that um, launching this month. I'm so excited and I can't wait to hear that. Um, and where can people find you? Everywhere. If you're watching this right now, listening to this, you can find me on the same exact platform. Look up uh, Walter Gaynor the second. It's the great Walt on all the social platforms. Heavy on LinkedIn. You can find me on YouTube, Boss Locks Media. You just search whatever and I'll be there. Um, if you really want to, because I'm actually working on deplatforming myself. So creating, you know, private spaces that aren't driven by the algorithm. So you can text me at 914-353-4176 to kind of get in that free. There are some paid things like a Patreon and stuff, but I'm just talking about just like being in community with people. And that's just like a you know, free 99. So 914-95, or sorry, 914-353-4176. Uh, text me, don't call, text. All right, well, thank you so much well, for hanging out with me. Now I got to go. I kept the Obamas waiting for too long. You know, they're, they're... My bad, Michelle, my bad, Barack. Free six, no face. So much amazing shit we're going to be doing together. I'm looking forward to that. And I'll see you on the 29th, or see maybe you. sooner. Yes. All the above.
Shut it up and